How are you guys doing? Today is Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I am going to review yesterday's elite matchups and performances now that we're through the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Taking a quick step back and looking at where we are in the calendar year with less than two weeks left in 2022, we are still in the midst of college football bowl season. There was a bowl game yesterday. In terms of college basketball, there were no ranked games yesterday, but of course today is Tuesday, so there's a lot going on today. Taking a look at what's going on at the professional level, because yesterday was Monday, yesterday would be the last game of week 15, and now there are three weeks left in the NFL schedule as the defending champs have already been eliminated from playoff contention. In the NHL, there was a lot going on as one of the teams would score seven, and in the NBA, there was a good amount of action as well as the NHL and NBA are still in the first halves of their seasons. Taking a look, and also what's going on with club soccer as we transition back to that, we are currently in the midst of domestic tournaments, but none of the bigger teams are playing. I'll let you know when they do. Going first to what's going on with college football, the only college football bowl game that would take place would be the Myrtle Beach Bowl, as unranked Marshall would face off against unranked UConn. Marshall would end up beating UConn 28 to 14. They would shut UConn out 21 to nothing in the first half, as UConn outscored Marshall 14 to 7 in the second. It would not be close to enough. And on the losing end of this matchup, the UConn Huskies were let out by their starting quarterback Zion Turner. Their freshman from Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale, Florida would finish with 166 passing yards as he threw three interceptions. He had 25 yards on the ground as that would give him 191 yards of offense. UConn's leading rusher would be Victor Rosa. Their freshman out of Bristol, Connecticut, would finish with two rushing touchdowns as he had 75 rushing yards. And on the defensive side of the ball, UConn's leading tackler in this game would be Brandon Booyer Randall. Their senior out of Battle Creek, Michigan, would go on and finish with 10 total tackles on the day. UConn as a team would combine for just one sack and one interception. Malik Dixon Williams would get the interception alongside his five tackles and then Price Yates will get the lone sack alongside his four tackles. On the winning end of this matchup, the unranked Marshall Thundering Herd would be led in passing by their freshman quarterback from Huber Heights, Ohio, Cam Fancher. Fancher would throw for 93 yards as he would throw two touchdowns and an interception. His 10 rushing yards would give him 103 rushing or 103 total yards for the day. Marshall's leading rusher would be Rasheen Ali. Their sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio would finish with 15 carries for 92 rushing yards as he had a rush touchdown. Kalen Laybourne, their senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, would finish with 90 rushing yards as his nine yards through the air would give him 99 total. Marshall's leading receiver would be Corey Gamage. Their junior wide receiver from Delray Beach, Florida, would finish with 50 receptions off of three or 50 yards off three receptions as he had a receiving touchdown with more than half of the team's receiving yards. On the defensive side of the ball, the leading tackler for Marshall would be Eli Neal. Their junior Junior linebacker from Memphis, Tennessee would finish with 10 total tackles on the day. The team would combine for just one sack as it came from Ty Quay's legs. The team had three interceptions. Micah Abraham would finish with one interception on the day um, as he would finish with two tackles. Corey Gamage would finish with an interception as Corey Gamage would go on and finish with a couple of tackles himself. Damian Barber would finish with two tackles as he had a 34-yard pick six, and his pick six would be pretty early in the game. It would be in the very first quarter. With this win, the Marshall Thundering Herd will finish their 2022 college football season with a 9-4 and record after they had finished with a 5-3 and record in their conference under James Madison, Coastal Carolina, Troy, and South Alabama. With this loss, the unranked UConn Huskies will finish their 2022 football season with a 6 and 7 record. They are independents and and uh, this this was the chance for them to finish with a winning record, but they weren't able to. That was the only bowl game that would happen yesterday and of course looking at what's going on today. The first bowl game at 3:30 on ESPN will be the famous Idaho Potato Bowl as 
seven and four unranked San Jose State is getting ready to face off against unranked eight and four Eastern Michigan. That's going to be in Albertson Stadium in Boise, Idaho. At 7:30 on ESPN, unranked Toledo and unranked Liberty are going to play each other in the RoofClaim.com Boca Raton Bowl in Florida at the FAU Stadium. So, of course, after these two games are done, I will review this tomorrow. Taking a look at what's going on with college basketball, I said it earlier, there were no ranked teams that played yesterday. So, segueing into what's going on today, starting at 5 o'clock, 15th ranked Mississippi State, who is still undefeated, is set to face off against Drake in the Battle of the Vault in Nebraska. At 6.30 on FS1, 2nd ranked UConn, who is still undefeated, is set to host unranked Georgetown as both of these teams are are playing their second Big East games this year. At 6.30 at the same time, my alma mater, the 14th ranked Duke Blue Devils, are going to go to Wake Forest to face off against the unranked Demon Deacons. At 7 o'clock on SEC Network, 9th ranked Alabama is set to host unranked Jackson State as Jackson State has lost 10 of their first 11 basketball games this year. At the same time at 7, 18th ranked Indiana would host unran- is going to host unranked Elon in Bloomington. At 7 again, 24th ranked Marquette is going to go to Rhode Island to face off against unranked Providence in the Big East. At 8 o'clock, 12th ranked Baylor is set to host unranked Northwestern State. At 8.30, 5th ranked Arizona is going to host unranked Montana State. At 8.30, 22nd ranked Miami with only one loss is set to host 6th ranked Virginia who also has one loss. Both teams looking to give the other their first ACC loss this year. And then at 9 o'clock, 11th ranked Gonzaga is set to host unranked Montana. Taking a look at what's going at the professional level, um, the last football game of week 15 was yesterday in Lambeau as the Green Bay Packers hosted the defending champs LA Rams. The Packers would beat the Rams 24-12 as they would give the Rams their 10th loss of the season. Um, They would outscore the Rams 10-6 in the first half and then 14-6 in the second half. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting defending champs were led out by their starting quarterback, former number one overall pick out of Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. Mayfield would throw for 111 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. He would add a yard on the ground. Cam Akers, LA's running back out of Florida State, would lead the team in rushing and receiving. He would have 65 yards on the ground and 35 through the air, combining for 100 exactly. And then on the defensive side of the ball, the Rams would be led in tackles by Nick Scott. Their safety out of Penn State would finish with a total of nine tackles total. LA's linebacker out of Georgia, Leonard Floyd, would finish with five tackles as he had two of the team's three sacks. The team's lone interception would go to Taylor Rapp. The Rams' safety out of Washington would also go along and finish with seven tackles on the day, tied with Bobby Wagner for the second most on the team. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Green Bay Packers would be led out by their goaded starting quarterback, the reigning back-to-back NFL MVP, Aaron Rodgers, out of Cal. Uh, The former Super Bowl champ would complete 22 of his 30 passes. He would throw for 229 yards as he threw a touchdown and an interception. The Packers would be led in rushing by their elite running back out of UTL Paso, Aaron Jones. Jones would finish with 17 carries for 90 rushing yards. He would have four receptions for 36 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown. He would combine for 126 yards of offense for Green Bay. The Packers' second leading rusher, A.J. Dillon, out of Boston College, would finish with a couple of rushing touchdowns. He had 11 carries off of 36 rushing yards. He would also have 35 yards through the air, giving him 71 yards total. And on the defensive side of the ball, the Packers would be led in tackles by their cornerback out of West Virginia, Rasul Douglas. He would finish with eight total tackles and he would go on and finish with the team's lone interception. The Packers as a team would combine for five sacks as one of them would come from Preston Smith, their linebacker out of Mississippi State. With this win at home, the Green Bay Packers are 6-8. and eight. With three games left in their schedule, they're holding on to the third best record in the NFC North. They have five less wins in the division champs, the Minnesota Vikings. In the NFC playoff picture, the Packers are holding one less win than the seventh seed Washington Commanders, as things currently stand. They are on a two-game winning streak, and the Packers have won three of their last five games to date. With this loss, the defending champs LA Rams are 4-10. They are tied with the Arizona Cardinals for the worst record in the NFC West. 
with three games left in their schedule they are currently sitting six games behind the division leading and so far i imagine the division champs the san francisco 49ers they have been eliminated from playoff contention which means they cannot repeat as champions this year i'm um, sitting outside of the playoff picture they are tied with the cardinals for the second worst record in the nfc only the bears have a worse record than them there and of course with this loss the rams have lost four of their last five games to date so that is what the nfl is looking like as week 16 is going to get started on thursday as that matchup is going to see the new york jets host the jacksonville jaguars as both of these teams are fighting for a possible wild card spot or even the jaguars could possibly win their division at this point Taking a look at what's going on with the arena sports, starting off in Boston, the Boston Bruins of the NHL would host the Florida Panthers. The Bruins, who would come in with the best record in the NHL, would beat the Panthers 7-3 in a 10-goal extravaganza for the fans. The Bruins would score the first four goals of the game. The Panthers would score three goals in the second to bring it within one before the Bruins would shut the door by scoring the last three goals of the game. The top star would go to Boston center Patrice Bergeron. Their center from Canada would finish with two goals and two assists. Boston's left winger Brad Marchand out of Canada would finish with a trio of assists and then the third star would go to Boston's defender Brandon Carlo. With this win at home, the Boston Bruins are holding on to an NHL record of 25-4-2. Their 52 points in 31 games is the best record in the entire NHL right now. Taking a look at how they fare within their division, they are sitting 8 points ahead of the second place Maple Leafs. The Maple Leafs are tied with the Devils the leaders of the Metropolitan Division and the Hurricanes for that matter as well for the second best record in the East so they sit eight games behind the Bruins still the Bruins sit seven points ahead of the Western Conference leading Vegas Golden Knights right now they are holding on to a two-game winning streak as the Bruins have won seven of their last ten games to date on the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Florida Panthers are now 15-14-4. Their 34 points in 33 games ties them with the Buffalo Sabres for the fourth best record in the Atlantic Division. They sit 18 points behind the division-leading Boston Bruins. With this loss, the Florida Panthers have lost five of their last 10 games to date. Taking a look at what would happen in Columbus, Ohio, the Blue Jackets would host the Dallas Stars. The Stars would beat the Blue Jackets 2-1. They would score the first two goals of this game as the top star would go to Dallas's goalie Jake Odinger out of Minnesota. He would allow one goal to the Blue Jackets, but he would finish with 27 saves on the day. And with this win on the road, the Dallas Stars are holding on to an NHL record of 19-8-6. Their 44 points in 33 games is the best record in the Central Division. They sit three points ahead of the second-place Winnipeg Jets. They sit one point behind the Western Conference leading Vegas Golden Knights. And with this win, the Stars have won six of their last ten games. With this loss, the Columbus Blue Jackets are 10-19-2. Their 22 points in 30 one games is the worst record in the Eastern Conference. The Chicago Blackhawks and the Anaheim Ducks are the two teams in the West who have worse records at this point than the Blue Jackets. In their division, they sit 22 points behind the New Jersey Devils and the Carolina Hurricanes, who are tied at the top. The Blue Jackets are on a four-game losing streak. Only the Detroit Red Wings have a longer active winning streak in the East or the losing streak, I mean. And with this loss, the Blue Jackets have lost seven of their last 10 games. Jumping out to this nation's capital, the Washington Capitals would host the Detroit Red Wings. The Capitals would beat the Red Wings in overtime off of Dmitry Orlov's second goal of the season after Eric Gustafson would force overtime. The top star would go to Washington's right winger out of Huntsville, Alabama, Nick Dowd. He would finish with two goals and an assist. Washington's defender, Eric Gustafson, would finish with a goal and an assist as well as the third star of the game. With this overtime win at home, the Washington Capitals Capitals are 17, 13, and 4. Their 38 points through 34 games is tied with the New York Islanders for the third worst record in the Metropolitan Division. They are sitting six points behind the New Jersey Devils and the Carolina Hurricanes at the top. As of right now, the Capitals are on a two-game winning streak as they've won seven of their last 10 games. With this overtime loss, the Detroit Red Wings are 13, 11, and 7. As of right now, their 33 points in their 31 
21 games is the third worst record in the Atlantic Division. They sit 19 points behind the division leading Boston Bruins. The Red Wings six game losing streak is the longest active losing streak in the Eastern Conference. The Chicago Blackhawks are the only team in the NHL with a longer active losing streak than the Red Wings. And the Red Wings have lost eight of their last 10 games. Three of those eight losses would come in overtime or later. Jumping out to Nashville, Tennessee, the Predators would host the Edmonton Oilers from north of the border. The Nashville Predators would beat the Oilers 4-3 in overtime off of Alexandra Carrier's second goal of the season after Ryan Nugent Hopkins would force overtime for Edmonton. Alexandre Carrier, um, Nashville's defender out of Quebec City, would be the top star of the game with his lone goal. With this overtime win at home, the Nashville Predators are holding on to a record of 13, 13, and 4. Their 30 points in 30 games is the third worst record in the Central Division. They sit 14 points behind the division leading Dallas Stars. They've won four of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the Edmonton Oilers are now holding on to an NHL record of 17, 14, and 2. With their second overtime loss of the year, they sit nine points behind the division leading Vegas Golden Knights at 36 points. They are on a three game losing streak at this very moment. Only the Chicago Blackhawks have a longer active losing streak in the West than the Oilers do. The Oilers have lost six of their last 10 games. Two of those six losses would come in overtime or later. Jumping out to Colorado, the defending Stanley Cup champs Avalanche would host the New York Islanders. In a game that would go to shootout tied at zero, the Avalanche would win it off of Evan Rodriguez's goals in a game where both goalies were most definitely on. The top star would go to Colorado's goalie out of Bulgaria, Alexander Gorgiev. He would finish with 26 saves. And then Ilya Sorokin, New York's goalie, would finish with 20 more saves. However, he did allow the shootout goal. With his 46 saves, he would be the third star. I'm pretty sure I said that. But with this overtime win, the defending Stanley Cup champs Colorado Avalanche are 17-11-2. Their 36 points through 30 games is the fourth best record in the Central Division. They are sitting eight points behind the division leading Dallas Stars as they're on a two-game winning streak. The Avalanche have won five of their last 10 games to date. And with this shootout loss, the New York Islanders are 18, 13, and 2. Their 38 points in 33 games ties them with the Washington Capitals for the third worst record in the Metropolitan Division. The Islanders are currently sitting six points behind the Devils and the Hurricanes at the top of the division. And with this loss, the Islanders have lost eight of their last 10 games, or they've lost seven of their last 10 games to date. Two of those losses would come in overtime or later. Looking at another game that would go into overtime, the Arizona Coyotes would host the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens would beat the Coyotes in overtime after both teams scored two goals in the second period. It would be Mike Hoffman's seventh goal of the season for Montreal to give them the win. Mike Hoffman, uh, Montreal's left winger out of Kitchener, Ontario, would be the top star with his lone goal. The with I'm sorry, and with this road overtime win. The Montreal Canadiens are holding on to a 15-15-2 record. Their 32 points in 32 games is the second worst record in the Atlantic Division. They sit 20 points behind the division leading Boston Bruins right now. They're on a, they're, they've won four of their last 10 games to date. With this overtime loss at home, the Arizona Coyotes are now 10-15-5. Their 25 points in 30 games is the second worst record in the Central Division division. They are sitting 19 points behind the division leading Dallas Stars as the Coyotes are on a two-game losing streak. They've lost eight of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Las Vegas, the Golden Knights would host the Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres would beat the Golden Knights 3-2, scoring all three of their goals in the second before Vegas could respond. The top star of this game would be Buffalo's goalie out of Finland, Uko Pekka Lukanen. He would finish with two goals allowed as he had 41 saves. With this win on the road against the best team in the West, the Buffalo Sabres are holding on to a 16-14-2 record. Their 34 points in 32 games ties them with the Florida Panthers for the fourth best record in the Atlantic Division. The Sabres sit 18 points behind the division-leading Boston Bruins. They're on a four-game winning streak 
league at the moment and they've won seven of their last 10 games to date. With this loss at home, the Vegas Golden Knights are 21-11-1. They're 45 points in 34 games is the best record in the West. They sit seven points behind the Eastern Conference leading Boston Bruins. They sit one point ahead of the Central Division leading Dallas Stars and they sit six points ahead of the LA Kings who are sitting in second place in the Pacific Division. The Golden Knights are on a two-game losing streak as they've now lost five of their last 10 games. And last but not least, looking at the Canadian Southwest, the Vancouver Canucks would host the St. Louis Blues. The Blues would beat the Canucks 5-1 to one after they would see Vancouver tie the game up at 1 just for St. Louis to score the last four goals of the game. They would take the outright lead off of Nathan Walker's first goal of the season as Jordan Cairo, St. Louis's center out of Toronto, would be the top star of the game. He would finish with a hat trick, meaning three goals, and he would finish with an assist. St. Louis's center, Robert Thomas, would finish with a goal and an assist and then their right winger out of Russia Vladimir Tarasenko would finish with three assists for the day. With this win on the road the St. Louis Blues are holding on to a 16-15-1 record. As of right now, their 33 points in 32 games is the fifth best record in the Central Division. They sit 11 points behind the division leading Dallas Stars. The St. Louis Blues are on a four game winning streak right now. Only the Minnesota Wild have a longer active winning streak in the West. And with this loss at home, the Vancouver Canucks are 13, 15, and 3. Their 29 points in 31 games is the third worst record in the Pacific Division. They sit 16 points points behind the division leading Vegas Golden Knights. Right now they're on a two game losing streak as they've lost five of their last 10 games to date. Taking a look at what's going on today in the NHL, starting off at 7, the two top teams in the Metropolitan Division will face off against one another as the Carolina Hurricanes host the New Jersey Devils, both teams holding 44 points. At 7 o'clock, the Philadelphia Flyers are set to host the Columbus Blue Jackets as the Blue Jackets are holding on to the worst record in the East. At 7, the Pittsburgh Penguins are set to host the New York Rangers as the Rangers are holding on to a 7-game winning streak. At 7 o'clock, clock, the Toronto Maple Leafs are hosting the defending back-to-back-to-back Eastern Conference champs, Tampa Bay Lightning, as the Lightning are holding on to a five-game winning streak. At 8 o'clock, the Winnipeg Jets, who are sitting second in the Central, are set to host the Ottawa Senators. At 10, the Seattle Kraken are going to host the Blues. At 10.30, it'll be an LA Derby as the LA Kings will host the Anaheim Ducks, as the Ducks hold the worst record in their division. At 10.30, the San Jose Sharks are going to host the Calgary Flames in the Bay Area. So taking a look now at what's going on in the NBA, starting off in Cleveland, the Cavaliers would host and defeat the Utah Jazz by 23. They would win this game 122-99 to after they outscored the Jazz by 18 in the first half. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Jazz would be led in scoring by their starting power forward out of Arizona. Lowry Markinen at 24 points, 6 rebounds and 2 steals in 32 minutes. He shot 7 for 12 from the field, 3 for 6 from 3, and 7 for 10 from the free throw line. Their starting point guard, Jordan Clarkson, had 23 points in 32 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 21 from the field, 3 for 6 from 3. He would make all four of his free throw attempts. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Cleveland Cavaliers were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard, Donovan Mitchell. He would finish with 23 points in two rebounds in 23 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 12 from the field, 4 for 5 from 3 as he made all three of his free throws. Cleveland small four Forward off the bench, Chetty Osman had 22 points in 24 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 10 from the field, 5 for 6 from 3, and he made one of his two free throws. Cleveland starting center and former all-star Jared Allen had 20 points and 11 rebounds in 30 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 11 from the field as he made all six of his free throws. With this win at home, the Cleveland Cavaliers are now 21 and 11. They are holding the third best record in the East as they now sit two games behind the Eastern Conference leading Milwaukee Bucks. 
Win percentage wise, they are pretty much sitting right above the Memphis Grizzlies who are sitting on top of the West, which means the Cavaliers have the third best winning percentage in the NBA as well as the East. Um, in addition to sitting two games behind the Bucks, the Cavaliers are on a four game winning streak. They've won seven of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the Utah Jazz are 17 and 16. They hold the ninth best record in the West. They sit four games behind the conference leading Memphis Grizzlies. The Jazz are on a two-game losing streak as they've lost five of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Philadelphia, the 76ers would host the Toronto Raptors. In a game that would go to overtime, the Sixers would beat the Raptors 104-101. to They would outscore the Raptors 5-2 to in the overtime period, but it would get the job done. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Raptors were led in scoring by their starting power forward, Pascal Siakam. He had 38 points, 15 rebounds, and 6 assists as he would finish with 5 turnovers in 48 minutes. He would shoot 13 for 27 from the field, 3 for 8 from three as he shot nine for 11 from the free throw line. Toronto's power forward off the bench, Chris Boucher, had 13 points, 10 rebounds, and two assists in 30 minutes. He shot four for six from the field as he made all four of his free throws. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown 76ers were led in scoring by their elite starting center out of Kansas, Joel Embiid. Embiid had 28 points, 11 rebounds, four assists, and two steals in 42 minutes. He shot six for 16 from the field, two for three from three, and 14 for 15 from the free throw line. Philly starting power forward, Tobias Harris, had 21 points, in 42 minutes he would shoot seven for nine from the field five for seven from three and he would make both of his free throws the sixers elite starting point guard james harden finished with 14 points seven rebounds eight assists and five turnovers in 42 minutes the former mvp would shoot five for 14 from the field one for six from three and he would make all three of his free throws with this win in overtime the 76ers are 17 and 12. that is the fifth best record in the east they now sit four and a half games behind the conference leading bucks the 76ers are on a five game winning streak right now only the nets and the knicks have longer winning streaks in the east However, with this win, the Sixers have won seven of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the Toronto Raptors are 13 and 18. They now are holding on to the fifth worst record or the 10th best record in the East. They are sitting nine and a half games behind the conference leading Milwaukee Bucks. The Raptors' six-game losing streak is short, is short to only the Washington Wizards for the longest active losing streak in the East. The Raptors have lost eight of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Atlanta, the Hawks would host the Orlando Magic. Atlanta would beat Orlando by one at home as they would outscore the Magic by seven in the first quarter and in the third quarter as they started their halves out very well. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Magic were led out by their starting point guard, former number one overall pick out of Washington, Markel Fultz. Fultz had 24 points, 6 rebounds, and 9 assists in 33 minutes. He shot 11 for 19 from the field and 2 for 3 from 3. Orlando starting center Mo Wagner had 16 points and 10 rebounds alongside 2 steals in 30 minutes. He would end up shooting 5 for 10 from the field as he made all 5 of his free throws as well. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Atlanta Hawks were led in scoring by their elite starting point guard Trey Young. Trey Young finished with 37 points, 3 rebounds, and 13 assists in 36 minutes. He shot 11 for 22 from the field, 3 for 7 from 3 as he made all 12 of his free throws. With this win, the Atlanta Hawks are holding on to a 16-15 and record. They are tied with the Miami Heat for the seventh best record in the East. They are sitting six and a half games behind the conference leading Bucks. The Hawks are on a two-game winning streak as they've won five of their last 10 games to date. With this loss on the road, the Orlando Magic are 11-21. and They hold the third worst record in the East as they sit 12 games behind the conference leading Bucks. The Magic have lost four four of their last 10 games to date. Taking a look at what would happen in Houston, the Rockets would host the San Antonio Spurs from within the state. The Spurs would beat the Rockets 124 to 105 to leave the Rockets as the only team in the West with a single digit amount of wins. The Spurs won this game one 
where they won it by 19 points on the road after they would outscore the Rockets by 18 points in the third quarter alone. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Rockets were led in scoring by their starting center, Alperin Sengun. He would finish with 22 points in 24 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 10 from the field and 6 for 10 from the free, 6 for 8 from the free throw line. On the winning end of this matchup, the visiting San Antonio Spurs were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard, Devin Vassell from Florida State. He would finish with 26 points and 5 assists in 29 minutes, shooting 10 for 17 from the field, 5 for 8 from 3 as he made his only free throw attempt. With this win on the road, the San Antonio Spurs are 10-20. and 20. They hold the second worst record in the West as they sit 9.5 games behind the conference leading Grizzlies. The Spurs have won 4 of their last 10 games. With this loss, the Houston Rockets are 9-21. and 21. They hold the worst record in the West even though they are still sitting win percentage wise ahead of the Hornets and the Pistons out East. The Rockets are sitting 10 and a half games behind the conference leading Grizzlies, the only team that's more than 10 games behind the leader. They are on a three game losing streak at this moment. Only the Pelicans have a longer losing streak in the West. The Rockets have lost six of their last 10 games. Taking a look at what would happen in the Great Lakes region, the Minnesota Timberwolves would host the Dallas Mavericks. The Timberwolves would beat the Mavericks 116-106 to 106, as they would get to a game above 500, dropping the Mavericks to a game below 500. The Timberwolves won this game by 10 at home after they outscored the Mavericks by 22 points in the second quarter. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Mavericks were led in scoring by their starting guard, Spencer Dinwiddie. He would finish with 20 points and 7 assists in 38 minutes. He shot 6 for 13, 5 for, eight, or five for 10 from the three-point line and three for four from the free throw line. Dallas's elite starting guard out of Slovenia, Luka Doncic, had 19 points, six rebounds, seven assists as well in 28 minutes. He would shoot five for 17 from the field, three for eight from three. He would shoot six for seven from the free throw line. Dallas is starting forward, Christian Wood, would finish with 15 points and 13 rebounds as he had two blocks and nearly fouled out with his five turnovers in 34 minutes. He shot four for 11 from the field and six for seven from the free throw line. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Timberwolves were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard out of Georgia, Anthony Edwards, and their starting center out of LSU, Naz Reed. Edwards had 27 points, 13 rebounds, nine assists, and two turnovers in 38 minutes. He would shoot seven for 21 from the field, three for six from three, and 10 for 11 from the free throw line. Naz Reed would finish with 27 points, 13 rebounds and two steals in 40 minutes. He shot 11 for 19 from the field, two for six from three, and three for four from the free throw line. And with this win, the Minnesota Timberwolves are holding on to a 16 and 15 record. They hold the 8th best record in the West, sitting 4 games behind the conference leading Grizzlies. The Timberwolves are on a 3 game winning streak. They are tied with the Phoenix Suns for the longest active winning streak in the West. They still sit behind the Cavaliers, the Nets, the 76ers, the Knicks as well and the Miami Heat for the longest active winning streak in the NBA, but you kind of get the idea. The Timberwolves have won six of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the Dallas Mavericks are 15-16. and 16. They are tied with the defending champs, Golden State Warriors, for the 10th best record in the West. They sit five games behind the conference leading Grizzlies as the Mavericks are on a two-game losing streak. They've lost five of their last 10 games, and right now they're 3-11 and 11 on the road. Jumping out to New Orleans, the Pelicans would host the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks would beat the Pelicans 128 to 119 as the Bucks are now holding on um, to a tie with the Celtics for the most wins in the NBA. The Bucks won this game 128-119 by nine points on the road after outscoring the Pelicans by five in the first half and then by five in the third quarter. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Pelicans would be led in scoring by their starting center, Jonas Valanciunas. He would go on and finish with 37 points, 18 rebounds, and 5 assists from the block in 37 minutes. Of course, 37 points in 37 minutes. My boy was balling. He would shoot 14 for 24 from the field, 7 for 10 from 3. He would make both of his free throws on the night. New Orleans is starting shooting guard out of Lehigh. CJ McCollum would finish with 31 points, 8 rebounds, and 9 assists as he would play 41 minutes. He shot 11 for 24 from the field, 6 for 10 from 3. He would make three of his four free throw attempts. With 
are, I guess, on the winning end of this matchup. The visiting Bucks were led in scoring by their future Hall of Famer out of Greece, Giannis Antetokounmpo. The two-time NBA MVP would finish with 42 points and 10 rebounds in 34 minutes. He would go on and shoot 12 for 17 from the field, 1 for 3 from 3, and he would shoot 17 for 22 from the foul line. Milwaukee starting center out of Stanford, Brooke Lopez, would finish with 30 points and 7 rebounds, as well as 3 assists in 35 minutes. He shot 12 for 17 from the field, 4 for 9 from 3. He would make both of his free throws. Milwaukee starting point guard Drew Holiday had 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 2 steals in 35 minutes. He would go on and shoot 6 for 12 from the field, and he would go on and shoot a perfect 4 for 4 from the free throw line. With this win, the Milwaukee Bucks are now 22 and 8. They hold the best record in the NBA. They just have one less loss than the Celtics, meaning they sit half a game ahead of them. With this win, the Bucks are on a two-game winning streak, and they've won seven of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the New Orleans Pelicans are 18 and 12. They currently hold on to the fourth best record in the West as they now sit a game and a half behind the conference leading Grizzlies. The Pelicans four game losing streak is the longest active losing streak in the Western Conference. The Toronto Raptors and the Wizards out East have longer losing streaks than New Orleans. And with this alongside their four game losing streak, the Pelicans have only lost four of their last 10 games. Of course, using this to segue into what would go down in Oklahoma City, the Thunder would host the Portland Trailblazers from up north and up west. The Thunder would beat the Trailblazers 123-121 to by two at home as they came into the fourth quarter tied. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Trailblazers were led in scoring by their elite starting point guard out of Weber State, Damian Lillard. Their perennial all-star would finish with 28 points three rebounds and six assists in 39 minutes. He would shoot nine for 17 from the field, six for 12 from three. He would make all four of his free throw attempts. Portland starting small forward Jeremy Grant had 26 points, eight rebounds and two steals in 42 minutes. He would shoot 10 for 18 from the field and five for seven from the free throw line. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Thunder would be led in scoring by their starting point guard out of Kentucky, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He would finish with 35 points, two rebounds, and six assists, as well as two blocks in 36 minutes. Shea would shoot 10 for 24 from the field. He would make his only three-pointer as he shot a perfect 14 for 14 from the free throw line with this win at home. The Oklahoma City Thunder are holding on to a 13 and 18 record. They hold the third worst record in the Western Conference. They sit seven games behind the conference leading Grizzlies as the Thunder are on a two-game winning streak having won five of their last 10 games. With this loss, the Portland Trailblazers are 17 and 14. That is the seventh best record in the West, sitting three games behind the Grizzlies. They are, they have now lost four of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Phoenix, Arizona in the middle of the desert, the Suns would host the Lakers. They would beat the Lakers by 26 as they won at 130-104. to They would outscore the Lakers by 14 in the first quarter and then by 10 in the second as they were up by 24 at the half. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Lakers were led in scoring by their starting point guard out of Germany, Dennis Schroeder. Schroeder would finish with 30 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists in the 29 minutes he played. Schroeder would shoot... 12 for 9 from the field, 2 for 2 from 3, as he would make all four of his free throws. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Phoenix Suns would be led in scoring by their elite starting point guard and future Hall of Famer, the NBA's all-time, or at least their active leader in assists, Chris Paul. He would finish with 28 points, 4 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals in 31 minutes. He would shoot 9 for 18 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3, and 7 for 8 from the free throw line. Phoenix is starting center. Their former number one overall pick from the state, um, DeAndre Ayton, would finish with 21 points and 11 rebounds in 26 minutes. He shot 9 for 11 from the field. He would make his only three-pointer as he shot 2 for 4 from the free throw line. Their starting small forward, Mikhail Bridges, had 20 points in 30 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 16 from the field, 2 for 6 from 3 as he shot 4 for 5 from the free throw line. With this win, the Phoenix Suns are now 19-12. and 12. That is the third best record in the West as they sit a full game behind Memphis. They are holding on to a three-game winning streak. As of right now, they're tied with the Timberwolves for the longest active winning streak in the West.
The Suns have won four of their last 10 games to date. And with this loss, the LA Lakers are 13 and 17 through their first 30 games this year. They hold the fourth worst record in the West, sitting six and a half games behind the conference leading Grizzlies. The Lakers have lost five of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Sacramento, a little bit north of that, last but not least, the Kings would host the Charlotte Hornets, who came in with the worst record in the NBA. The Hornets would end up beating the Kings 125-119, to so they no longer hold that title for right now. The Hornets would end up beating the Kings by 6 after outscoring them by 9 in the first quarter, and then by 7 in the fourth. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Kings were led in scoring by their starting point guard out of Kentucky, De'Aaron Fox. He had 37 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists as he nearly fouled out in 34 minutes. Fox shot 14 for 25 from the field, 2 for 5 from 3, and 7 for 9 from the free throw line. <clears throat> Sacramento starting power forward DeMontis Sabonis finished with 28 points, 23 rebounds, and 7 assists in 41 minutes. He would shoot 12 for 19 from the field. He would make both of his 3-point attempts, and he would shoot 2 for 5 from the free throw line. On the winning end of this matchup, the visiting Charlotte Hornets were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard Kelly Oubre Jr. He had 31 points and 9 rebounds in 38 minutes, shooting 12 for 25 from the field, 3 for 8 from 3, and 4 for 6 from the free throw line. Line. Charlotte's elite starting point guard and former Rookie of the Year, LaMelo Ball, would finish with 23 points, 5 rebounds, and 12 assists as he fouled out in 27 minutes. LaMelo would shoot 9 for 19 from the field and 5 for 10 from 3. Off the bench, Charlotte's center, Nick Richards, out of Kentucky, would finish with 14 points and 11 rebounds in the 23 minutes he played. Nick Richards would shoot 6 for 9 from the field and 2 for 3 from the foul line. With this win, the Charlotte Hornets are 8 and 23. They hold the second worst record in the Eastern Conference as one of three teams in the NBA with a single digit amount of wins. The Hornets hit 14 and a half games behind the conference leading Bucks. The Hornets have won two of their last 10 games. And with this loss, the Sacramento Kings are 16 and 13. They hold the sixth best record in the West, sitting three games behind the conference leading Grizzlies as they've lost four of their last 10 games. So right now, that brings us to where we are now in the NBA schedule. Today is Tuesday, meaning the primetime games are on TNT. At 7.30, the New York Knicks, who come into this game with the longest active winning streak in the NBA at seven games, are going to host the defending champs Golden State Warriors, who have only won three of their first 17 road games, as the Warriors sit just a game under 500. After that, on TNT at 10 o'clock, the Denver Nuggets are going to host the Memphis Grizzlies, as they hold the top two records in the West. Only a game separates them. A win could see the Nuggets tied with the Grizzlies at the very top. Outside of the primetime games, at 7, the Pistons are going to host the Jazz as the Pistons now are holding on to the worst record in the NBA. At 7.30, the Miami Heat are going to host the Chicago Bulls. And then at 9, the Phoenix Suns are going to host the Washington Wizards as the Wizards look to put an end to their 10-game losing streak, the longest in the NBA right now. With that said, I do want to thank everyone for really kind of following along. And once everything is done today, I will catch you tomorrow on Wednesday, December 21st with everything that happened today. I do want to thank the ESPN, the NCAA, the NFL, NHL, and NBA sites for giving me all the facts and figures that I needed. Of course, I would not be able to do this by myself. And of course, just I just thank, I just thank everyone for their patience and being able to just keep up with this. I hope all is well, and I will catch you with more tomorrow. Peace out.